So um, welcome everyone. Um, it's really great to see so many of you here um, and also welcome to our guests watching online live via the internet. We've got over 50 people watching from across five continents so this is bringing think tank communications uh, to the rest of the world as well. Um, I'm Leonora Merry, I'm Head of Media and External Affairs at the Social Market Foundation and I'm going to be the chair for your uh, event today. Um, for those of you that don't know, the SMF is an independent, non-partisan think tank. We look at um, how to balance the use of markets in UK public policy with the aim of social justice. Um, and we're currently the UK Think Tank of the Year, according to Prospect magazine. We're awarded Economic and Financial Think Tank of the Year too. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to ODI for hosting us today in this really amazing venue um, and also enabling us to live stream the event and uh, ensure it's smooth running. Um, just a bit of background to the, the event, it, it came about appropriately enough through a conversation that I had with Richard on Twitter um, about the, uh, the need to have some kind of uh, discussion on uh, the future of think tank communications um, and um, he was doing some, uh, I think it was to Joseph Roundtree Foundation, um, some presentation about uh, the future of think tank comms and I thought it looked interesting so it seems I wasn't the only one so that's great. Um, and before we start a bit of housekeeping, if the fire alarm sounds everyone should make their way through the doors here to ODI's reception. Um, please don't turn off your mobile phones because we want to encourage you to tweet your thoughts and join in using the hashtag wonkcoms. Um, but please do put them onto silent. Um, and the Wi-Fi passcode is up on the uh, slide behind me. We're launching a LinkedIn <coughs> group today under the Wonk Comms brand. This will give people somewhere to discuss all elements of think tank communications, from what clippings agency you use to tweeting about uh, sharing interesting blogs and that kind of thing. It's part of a wider initiative that Nick is leading to encourage collaboration on communications in the think tank world. So Nick will probably talk to you a bit about that later on. Yeah, I'll mention that. Um, as I mentioned, the event is being recorded and streamed live, so a video will be online towards the middle of next week and available on both the ODI and SMF websites. And our panellists will talk for about 40 minutes, focusing on in turn on the past, present and future of uh, think tank communications, developing a digital strategy and what the uh, digital revolution means for traditional media. And we've got a great lineup of speakers here. Um, on my far right, we've got Richard Darlington, who worked for over 10 years uh, in think tank communications, not on my far right in terms of his <laughs> politics, I have to say. <laughs> um, so Richard's head of news at IPPR, previously also a special advisor to the Minister for International Development. Um, on my left, we've got Nick Scott, who's Digital Communications Manager at the ODI and creator of the ODI's award-winning digital strategy, which we'll be talking to you about later. And right here next to me, we've got John Prido, who's homepage editor of The Economist. Um, he's overseeing the newspaper's transition to digital, and John's previously worked as a political co correspondent, an India correspondent, and a Brazil correspondent. So continue our international theme today. Um, and before I hand over to our panel, I just want to say a few words briefly to kind of uh, set up the discussion and uh, explain why we're here today. So think tanks vary hugely in size, financing, structure and scope. And we, I think that's evident in the cross-section we have here in the room, um, watching online and also here on the panel. The SMF that I work for has eight staff, IPPR has 40, and the ODR I think has about 200. So um, massive variation in think tanks. But we do all share a common purpose, um, and our common purpose is to help governments and other policymakers make informed choices <coughs> about public, uh, domestic and international public policy. And so how successful we are on that depends to a large extent on how successfully we communicate about our research insights. If no one's heard of what we're doing, there's not much point in us doing it, frankly. Think tanks have been around since, I think, in the UK, the um, end of the 19th century. Do we have anyone here from the Fabian Society? Yeah, hello, Fabian Society, uh, the UK's oldest think tank. Um, so traditional think tank model has been producing pamphlets, hosting discussion and informing debate. But in recent years, the digital revolution has taken our sector by storm. It creates unprecedented opportunities both to spark new policy ideas and to get these ideas out to a new audience. Tools like Twitter and Facebook and things like live streaming, as we're doing now, can bring think tank output directly to new and existing audiences in real time. But the size and scale of information can be overwhelming 
And with resources tight, the question is, how can think tanks stay on top of it all? Are pamphlets and debates a thing of the past? What do the experiences of media organisations, also subject to huge change, tell us? And how can we harness the opportunities presented by evolving technology? So there's some of the questions that we're going to be discussing today. And I'm going to hand over now to our first panellist, Richard Darlington from IPPR, who's going to be talking to you about the past, present and future of think tank comms.